Turn right! Good uses, let me have the wheel! The bus driver's name was Kate. <laughs> Contact her via the show. And we've got a brilliant show for you tonight. The gorgeous Hollywood star, Sandra Bullock, is here! I know! Legendary Hollywood star, Samuel L. Jackson, is on the show! A British actor is becoming a Hollywood star, Mr. Nick Frost, is here! Plus, we've got music from the brilliant Jake everybody. Yeah, we do. We do. I'm not making it up. We actually do. Samuel L. Jackson, what a list of films he has to his name. Star Wars, Pulp Fiction, The Avengers, and of course, Snakes on a Plane. <laughs> now, don't worry, if you haven't seen it, I won't tell you what it's about. <laughs> Imagine getting on a plane and seeing loads of snakes. I can't think of anything more frightening on a plane. There aren't enough free drinks in the world. <laughs> now, the film, of course, featured terrifying man-eating pythons. Here's Samuel meeting one, and here he is five minutes later. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> Mr. Jackson, Mr. Jackson. Hey, I'm so looking forward to meeting Sandra, oh, Sandra Bullock, star of The Proposal, Demolition Man, Blindside, and, of course, Speed, which was basically a romantic movie, but set on a bus. You know, room for one more on top. Ding, ding. <laughs> Can you move right down inside, please? <laughs> I don't remember that bit. <laughs> it was exciting. It was exciting when she had to drive the bus to stop it exploding. I mean, she looks terrified there. What's at the back of that bus that's making her so scared? Hello! <laughs> God. Uh, Sandra went on to star in Speed 2. Now, she looks terrified there as well. What's in the water that's making her so scared? Hello again! <laughs> like, what is he doing? <laughs> Looks like he's, like, in half a walnut shell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sandra's going to be telling us about her, seriously, hilarious new cop buddy movie called The Heat. It really is terrific. Though, funny enough, that isn't the first thing I came up with when I googled Bullock in Heat. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. lovely to see you. And it's us. He's a guest for Al with cheese, Samuel L. Jackson. Hi, oh. <laughs> sir. How are you? <laughs> and Is a couch indeed. <laughs> loving it. Loving it. And can I just say it was nice to meet you all. Got a nice hug from Nick. Thank that you. That was nice. I'm a keen hugger. <laughs> I think it's important. Yeah, I'm not a loony, I don't just hug anyone, but if you're gonna commit to a hug, you should commit to the hug. Okay. No, because it was a total hug. Don't just do top bit. What is that? Well, you know, I think a good hug you should feel chest. Oh. Hips and thighs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Just get in, get in, get, get in, in amongst it, you know? If you're going to press the flesh, yeah, yeah. press yeah. the flesh. Are you a hugger? <laughs> well, I thought I was, but I, I, I didn't realize I was supposed to go below the waist as well. So well, it's... Now I know. know. It's nice. Yeah. Now, now I'll be doing it's my hugs differently. It's a little extra, isn't it? Oh, well, sometimes <laughs> you get a little extra. Oh, you get a little extra. Because, <laughs> Sam, it's so funny in the proposal, the scene of you when you both run in. Ah, the naked scene. And But, like, but properly naked. I mean, yes, it's... Yes, there's nothing funnier than two naked bodies slapping together. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the 
There's nothing sexy about it at all. It's funny. <laughs> it's not like your hug. It's not intimate and yeah. sensual. It's like gonna be your frightening, hugs. can't it? <laughs> I'm sure for Ryan seeing me come at him at that speed was a little scary, but um, to confess, I wasn't really looking at you. I don't but, blame uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember you looking great. <laughs> no, I don't do naked for for sexy. I, naked only works for me in the funny. But it was great. What did you say you don't do naked in the serious, only in the funny? <laughs> yes. Okay. Maybe that's. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You know. No, on film, on film. They're not like awkward in anyway. I mean, they're awkward no, it's anyway. Like, yeah, anyway, yeah. put, like, it's literally always, look at, if, you, you, if you're having sex and you <laughs> get recorded awkward. and you don't know you're being recorded, you, my guess, not that I've ever done this. I was going to say, this is a weird story. <laughs> is that you don't look good doing it. No. Oh, you know. Yeah. You just, this doesn't, nobody, I can't imagine <laughs> that someone would look good whilst having. What? Intercourse, oh. not knowing their film. But have you noticed any time oh, someone has a think? sex tape, it's beautifully lit. <laughs> they've got the good angles. They're like, that's right. That's like over the shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Who does that? Do you know? Who does that? I got some friends that do that. <laughs> oh. We do have uh, loads to talk about tonight, because uh, Samuel is in town to do some charity work. Uh, Nick, you've got the last in your sort of Hot Files, Shaun of the Dead trilogy, yep. World's End. And Sandra Bullock is in... It's, well, it's going to be like the comedy of the summer, isn't it? It's, it's, we, we don't know yet. It's oh, you must, yeah. you must be thrilled with it. It's the heat. It doesn't yep. open here until the 31st of July. And it, it's you and Melissa McCarthy. And we're very and, hot. Yeah. I, you can't tell from the poster, we are so hot. In yeah. this, <laughs> I mean, we didn't want to give it all away at the beginning, but we are so, I don't want to say sexual, but we are just oozing, <laughs> we're oozing a, something that is very dynamic. Because it's a, it's a cop buddy, comedy caper, yeah. but it's women. I know, isn't that weird that women should be cops or have anything to do with, like, Or should be funny or, or friends. Friends or <laughs> hot. Exactly. <Yeah. laughs> it's That's the first one of these since Delma and Louise, right? Uh, is it? No. No. <laughs> But no, here's, the, here's the thing. So it, it's you, Melissa, and you are, you know, you're on screen a yes. lot. You're doing everything together, and it is, you know, it's a buddy movie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But were you buddies? Did you know each other before? No, we didn't, we didn't know each other before. But it was, it was one of those special things that happens usually when you're, you know, when you're in a bar and you're a little drunk. Like when you see someone you're really, you just really have something for and you don't know why. You know, we just, their eyes catch each other and, and, and you just slowly walk towards one another and it just, you just can't help, you're drawn. Mm -hmm. And it's scary, um, but you step forward anyway. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a hug story. It's, we're getting, <laughs> we're getting hug. Okay. And then we met and then we had a little hug. And it was just, I went, <gasps> you know, and your breath just yes. gets taken away. <laughs> That's pretty much what happened. Well, listen, I'll tell you what. Seriously, I saw it in, in those really terrible circles, you know, where it's yeah. just, like, two or three people yeah. in, like, a little viewing thing. Yeah. And we were laughing out loud. Oh, good. Oh, so good. I'm guessing there's a big crowd. We will. Lots yeah. of laughing. We hope, yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, here's, a, uh, here's a clip. This is you meeting Melissa McCarthy's family. Yes. For, do we need to say anything about that? You're a bit more uptight than her? I'm just... Yeah, I have... I'm very uptight. I'm very by the book. And her family I've not met yet in... They sort of have their way with me when yeah. I walk in the room. Et voila. <laughs> okay. And I, a lot of that, a lot of that is improvised. Painfully, yes. Uh, <laughs> the narc was kind of scripted. Uh, anything that was very cruel towards me after that, <laughs> I wasn't made aware of until I sat down. <laughs> <laughs> You just have to, you just, you just suck it up. I just had to suck it up. Because it's directed by Paul, is it Feig? Feig. 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 Yeah. Who uh, directed Bridesmaids. He did. And there's a very kind of extended scene. It's you and Melissa getting drunk. Yes. In a bar. So, yeah. like, presumably that wasn't scripted, or it was. No, it said they get drunk. Seriously? <laughs> Seriously. And then they said maybe they dance. Okay. Uh, and you do do both of those things. We do. We did, we did that all day <laughs> with no help from alcohol whatsoever. And does somebody say, okay... <laughs> I like that yeah. move. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, I know that's, that's, what you're doing I call, It's called the sex walk. Uh, I call it the sex walk. Mm -hmm. We made her the worst dancer possible, so everything is like a stab in the air. <laughs> so that's her big move. And do they just say, <laughs> we've got... <laughs>
Captain Bird's eye. Oh, yeah. That is hot. Oh, yeah. You feeling it? That's Broadway. Do you feel it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Who gets credit to as the writer for all this improvisational work no, you she, guys No, the writer was amazing. When it's really funny, mm -hmm. it was the writer. Oh. When we think it's funny, it's improv. <laughs> it's improv. <laughs> but in terms of drunk acting, because yeah. Nick Frost down the end there, well, you've done a lot of drunk acting. I do do a lot of drunk acting. Yeah. And a lot of research has gone into it, clearly. But <laughs> I think the key to it is not, don't do too much. Yeah. Because you know, I think people who are very drunk try not to be drunk, so... <laughs> I was trying to do maybe... Put my foot up on a step that isn't there. That's always good drunk acting. <laughs> and, but do you remember how you were when you were drunk? That's what I always think. I don't know what I was like when I was drunk. Uh, yeah, I kind of go into the bathrooms and I say, remember this, remember this. <laughs> <laughs> remember how you feel. <laughs> you, you were drunk, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but now, obviously, when people get drunk, they might get aggressive. And Samuel, Samuel L. Jackson, when people are rude to you, you kind of fight back, don't you? Like, particularly on chat rooms, you will go into a chat room and you will go, no, yeah, we he, went was, from he drunk was good in the chat thing. room. Um, what kind of chat room? Well, <laughs> I hang around online, uh, especially when people are talking about movies. Uh, when I have a movie out, I'm not like most actors. Most actors say, I don't read my reviews and I don't care what people. I read my reviews. And if I'm online, I go online and I read all the reviews, and then I start going through the comments uh -huh. about the review, <laughs> and then I find some website where everybody's talking, and I'll just bust into it <laughs> and just start saying shit about the movie. And they sometimes they know it's me, and eventually somebody will get it. It's like, oh my God, it's him, you know. And you know, I go off on people. I mean, I went off on Al Scott about the Avengers when he started talking about how horrible the Avengers was and comparing it to real Bravo, I'm like, dude, this is not high cinema, it's Avengers. <laughs> the Hulk, you know, we're having fun. So he said something bad, I said something bad, he whined, the critics got on his side, my 2.5 million Twitter followers jumped on his ass, and then some more people jumped on their ass. So, and apparently we won because the movie made billions of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. What is Rio Bravo doing about that? Not that. Not that. Yeah, but that online community, yeah. like that online community, you walk like right, snakes on a plane is not how that could have happened. Hey, I stand by that movie steadfastly because I had a great time making that movie, and that's what it was about for me. That was the kind of movie I would have gone to see when I was a kid. And I showed up to do the movie, and they were talking about Pacific Flight 113. And I'm going, what the hell is this? You know, well, Sam, we don't want to give it away. You don't. What do you mean? <laughs> Snakes on a plane. We're doing Snakes on a plane. And I'm not doing Pacific Flight 113. So, it's either Snakes on a plane or I'm out. So, it became Snakes on a plane. And, you know, I loved it. I had a great time. I, I still watch that movie. I, no, no. I stand by it. <laughs> I do Snakes on a plane two and three. <laughs> Talking planes, now, and this I don't think this is a bad story because I think everyone's fine. But you were in a plane crash, like a proper plane crash. Yes. What the hell is a proper plane crash? I... <laughs> he doesn't mean like just skidding oh. off the runway. You oh, mean I'm a so real scared. plane crash, yeah. like yeah. plane. I mean, no, it's sort of in a medium one if we're going to categorize it that okay. way. So. What well, in that you're alive? I think that I makes it alive. milder. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, we, we just uh, the, the pilots, as it were, missed missed the runway. Um, and we, we hit snow about five feet, so it broke the wheels off and the wings off, and it pitched us forward, and, yeah, and all the... That's a plane crash. Yeah. That's a plane crash. Do you yeah. feel sorry yeah. for me? If the wings of come off. Yeah. But everyone... I think it's but, a plane and, crash. like, everyone... Because you... <laughs> your dog, your dog yeah, was on I the had, I had my, my German Shepherd, and, like, when, once we hit, because the front nose of the, the plane was in the snow, so all we could see was just white coming through, and I didn't know we'd been hit in the back of the head with things, and I couldn't find the dog. I was freaking out, and all of a sudden, like, and yeah, I could see that her ears pop up, like... <laughs> <laughs> she was up in the cockpit with the pilot. Um, <laughs> so, and yeah. Did the pilot say sorry or anything? No. The first, the pilot, <laughs> he, he left, he got out of the Quickly. plane, and shut us in. And I think he was in shock and was looking for help. I thought we had hit the runway and other planes were going to land, but it was nighttime. And I'm like, where's the pilot? <laughs> And get, so I remembered how to open the door. We opened the door, and, and off we went. You see, listen to those stupid announcements. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no, 
That's me. That's why I don't fly private. Okay? <laughs> I, I like to fly with other people. <laughs> there's at least three people out there that have never been on a plane that deserve to live. <laughs> so I like being on planes with those first timers. You know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of awkward encounters, Nick Frost, you did the oddest thing. So, Nick, huh? I don't know if you know, there's a TV show called Spaced, a uh, sitcom. <laughs> which, uh, well, no. That was the first time we met Nick. Mm -hmm. So, Nick does Spaced, finishes series one, and then you went back to your job in the restaurant. Yeah, I did. Because I'd. Uh, I, I, no one had ever given me that much money before. So, I blew it all in like six weeks. <laughs> and then. <laughs> And then I had to go back to waitering because I, I didn't have any money. So, you know, I think I learned a very important lesson. <laughs> uh, from the get go, you know, always put it aside. Don't, don't blow it all. What did you spend it on? I just pissed it up the wall. <laughs> you know, I just went out a lot and just blew it. But, uh, but Simon Pegg. I had a great time, by the way. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm sure you did. It was the greatest five weeks of my life. <laughs> Yeah, the time fact that Nick works with a lot, you, you met him through working in restaurants. You yeah, together. I did. Yeah, he was, uh, his girlfriend worked in the same restaurant as I did, and I became friendly with her, and she said, you guys should meet, and, uh, and we met, and there was a tremendous static charge, and we just immediately fell in love. We got rid of her, and, <laughs> and the rest is, is history. It's about you and Melissa, it's like you and Melissa. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, except she didn't get rid of her husband. <laughs> no, so, yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want him in the relationship. Okay. He, he balances us out. But I'm no, like a sister was. wife. Yeah, but do you know what's weird, though? It's this, it, I don't know if this is very British. So, wife goes away, girlfriend goes away. Yeah. But you end up sleeping in a bed together. Yeah, we did. Uh, well, you know, he had nowhere to live. <laughs> we were best mates. He slept on the floor next to my bed for a few weeks. And then I said, you know, get in and we'll top and tail. Do you know what top and tail is? Yeah. So I we topped so. and tail for a while. I hope I know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we topped and tail for a while, yeah. and then we found ourselves one night like this in our single bed, reading a big glossy... Um, I think it was, a, like, a, a map, you know, like a big map of the world. <laughs> we just flicked through, said, God, look, that river's long. <laughs> we just said, oh, yes, just, go, just go to sleep. And that was it, and we just we slept together for ages. Cos it was just... <laughs> We didn't have any money, you know, we lived in a house which was full of people, and so you just, you know, it was cold, we just snuggled in. <laughs> but it never felt like it was going to develop. I mean, <laughs> I think some mornings I'd wake up and I didn't know where Simon ended and I began, sure. <laughs> but it never felt, like, pr primal. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> you are reunited now in uh, The World's so End. Good. The World's End, which opens on... The 19th of July, it yeah. opens here. Now, have you guys seen Shaun of the Dead or Hot Fuzz? Any so, yeah. All of them, yeah. All have you been? Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Now, look. And, uh, so this isn't connected to them, but it is sort of connected. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's the third film that we've done together, so there is a connection there. Um, people are calling it a trilogy, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not... It's three films, if you want to call that a trilogy, then, <laughs> then go right ahead. <laughs> and this one, it's essentially... It's like a, a pub crawl yeah. meets... Uh, kind of... The... Ar Armageddon. Oh, Armageddon, yeah. yes. Barmageddon, as we're calling <gasps> it. Thank you. Oh, is that, is that being used in publicity? I That's think it very is, yeah. Good. yeah. Yeah. It's Barmageddon. Barmageddon. Yeah. That was mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, the story is essentially five guys who haven't seen each other for perhaps 20 years um, reunite to do this famous pub crawl in their, in their, you know, what was their hometown. So, you know, it's like... It's, it's, I mean, in, in terms of Shaun of the Dead, it was, that was a love story, but there happened to be a zombie apocalypse going on in the background. <laughs> yeah. And it's about, you know, life goes on. Despite Barmageddon. Despite yeah. Barmageddon. Well, our clip is from the uh, start of the movie where Simon Pegg's character is trying to bring the old yeah. group of friends. Something has happened between Simon Pegg and I's character um, which completely ended our relationship. And now he's trying to get me, get me on board, essentially. Thank you. Hello. Now, Sandra Bullock. We must talk about your Oscar win. Because how fabulous. In 2010. We love an Oscar winner. We love an Oscar winner. And 
for anyone, obviously getting Oscar is great or being nominated is great. But because <laughs> <laughs> Samuel, what? No, what I'm trying to say is you. It's I never you, just well, no, an honor to, to be nominated. I was going to say. Fuck if that. It, you know, <laughs> This is what I was trying to say. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I'm, no. My so, bad. So it's like, <laughs> Sandra, you didn't just win an Oscar. You beat Meryl, which is like that's like a double win because that gets competitive. It it does. It not doesn't. A not between not us. Not between the people. Not between the people. Studios. Because yeah. you have to do the whole rounds of all the different award yes, shows. Yes, and you see. Yes. So what was the award show where you you locked lips with? You Meryl? mean where she asked for it? Or did she actually beg you? She well. The, the backstory, which no, and they're like, why did you go and kiss Meryl? And I go, well, who wouldn't want to kiss Meryl? But it, <laughs> she was egging me on this entire time. Like, she, she was heckling. She's like, eh, you know. And she, <laughs> she'd sent um, to my office, they go, oh my God, Meryl Streep sent you flowers. I was like, Meryl Streep sent me flowers. And up comes this, this nice bottom part with like three dead um, orchids on it. <laughs> and a note that said, die, bitch. Love Meryl. <laughs> <laughs> that is classy. Was, I like it that. It was it was no holes barred. I had to I had to take Beryl down. <laughs> I didn't. I kissed her. I figured like if if I was gonna humiliate her, kill her with kindness. Kill her with my kisses. No, no. And wait, you yeah. really like look at the look at the kiss. What was it? The look Al at that. No, look at that. <laughs> Pacino Fredo kiss yeah, there. Like, of course I knew did. it was you, Fredo. I <laughs> <laughs> about to eat her in that Yeah, you shot. really do. Yeah. yeah. That's how I kiss. Right there. That's how I kiss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not adding serious. I'm, 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 I'm how excited the kid in the background was, though. Yeah. That's how. It's good on girl action. Yeah. You know what the really awful thing is? He'll probably be flicking channels and see this and nobody... Does, do anyone know who he is? I don't know who But in a year's time, when he's the next Superman, we'll know exactly who he is. When we're not working anymore, all of us. Maybe you won't be. <laughs> I have a wife who shots. I have to work. <laughs> All right, Samuel, let's celebrate. You were nominated. You've been nominated for an Oscar once. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing, no? Fuck, man. <laughs> hey, people now, you know, when you go on talk shows, Academy Award nominee. Who cares? <laughs> what year was it? Nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody knows what year it was. I didn't win. I remember because I think I should have won. <laughs> I mean, it's one of those kind of things. But actually, you are, you are sort of famous as one of those people who didn't bother with the fake smiley clappy bit. You didn't, you didn't do that, did you? That's true. <laughs> I, I, did say, I did say, I did say, ah, shit, when I didn't win. <laughs> I didn't know it. Well, yeah, I did. Because yeah. <laughs> we wanted to show a clip of of you not winning an award. That costs money, doesn't it? <laughs> So much money. <laughs> the Oscars should be made of gold. They start charge much for the clips. Really? Yeah. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Who is telling us about the thing that it comes with cleaning instructions? I don't know. I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> I feel we've established Would that. Would you stop rubbing it in his face? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, that's what the great. cleaning instructions say, funnily enough. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad because we, we've focused on Samuel not winning an award for some time. Yeah, which is... So, <laughs> we, we can quickly big him... No, we can quickly big him up, though, because, and this is something to celebrate, you are in the Guinness Book of Records, Samuel L. Jackson, as the highest-grossing actor of all time, $7.4 billion. Wow. A lot of money for a lot of people. <laughs> Only I had 10% of that. Yeah. yeah. You know? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> because I suppose part of it is because you're in, you know, big successful franchises. Well, I've been in a couple of big movies. Most of them are called Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> That's a huge franchise. And I did a couple of other movies that were kind of cool. Um, I remember when um, George told me I was going to pass Harrison as the number one box office um, actor of all time. He was like, well, when this movie comes out, you'll pass him. And I was like, mm, I'm probably going to pass him this year then, because I did a little movie called The Incredibles I think it's going to make some money. <laughs> <laughs> and it 
Made some money. It was fine. It was fine. But yeah, it's been kind of great being in some big movies. Yeah. But, yeah. But Jurassic I, but Park's a big old movie. But I like the fact that you aren't, you know, because you're you're very cool to it, but you're not shy about saying, I want to be in that film. Yeah. Like Star Wars, you, you said. I want to be in Star Wars now, too, when Jedi yeah. plays Star Wars. <laughs> I mean, come on. Jedi has fallen from incredible heights, and a lot of them have lived with one hand. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, I, I think I can handle it. I think they can just come back to life. Why can't they? Yeah. The Jedi. Yeah, they can. You know, their Metaclorians can uh, reform and, and they can. Hey. There you go. <laughs> I can't imagine knowing that much. <laughs> you should see my cellar. <laughs> Is the thing about your, your lightsaber being a different color? Is that story true? That you the purple lightsaber? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, when I first got that job, I didn't know what I was going to do. When I said I wanted to be in Star Wars, George invited me over to the ranch. I got over and told him, look, I just want to be in the movie. I'll be a stormtrooper. You can put me in one of those white suits. And let me run across the screen. <laughs> Nobody needs to know that but me. And I'll be happy. And he's like, no, we'll figure out something. So I got over here, and he made me a Jedi. Um, you know. Um, and I was pleased. I did some scenes with Yoda, and I did some scenes with Liam, and everything was great. And then I came back the next year, and I was like, okay, he didn't kill me off. <laughs> and there's this big, we had this big arena fight scene with all these Jedi in there fighting or whatever. And I was like, well, shit, I want to be able to find myself in this big old scene. So I said to George, you think maybe I can get a purple lightsaber? And he's like, <laughs> lightsabers are green or lightsabers are red. And I'm like, yeah, but I want a purple one. You know, you know, I'm like the second baddest Jedi in the universe next to Yoda. You think, you said, let me think about it. And when I came back to do reshoots, he said, I'm gonna show you something. It's already causing a shit storm online. You know, and he had the purple lightsaber, and I was like, yeah! Oh, yeah. So um, I could find myself in that big fight scene in the middle of that, you know. There's like 300 lightsabers in there. There I am right there. <laughs> They make the purple red. one now. Oh, yeah, that's dope. Yeah, they make it. Oh, hang on. Wow. There you go. <laughs> that's the that's expensive one. Awesome. No, there's nothing to do with it. It just... What? Well, there's a couple oh, things sorry. you can do with it, and one of them would be give it to me. Oh. oh. Yeah. That's someone, someone in the office would be you know, so Can I just say, upset. someone in the office is Someone in the office is going to be really pissed. There you go. I'll touch Look it, and it'll be worth more. How's it feel? You know who would love this? My son. Oh, if you hit it, it no, does but... things. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it oh my makes God. noise. Yeah. Look at that. If my son had that, I would be decapitated. He does. <laughs> no. Oh. no. I have the real one at home that has bad motherfucker right here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Are you no. serious? Yeah. <gasps> you look good. See, she's auditioning. Yeah, she's auditioning. You. She's auditioning. <laughs> It's like going up for bat. <laughs> yeah, you can be. Like that? Oh, yeah. This is amazing. This gives you power. Yeah, you look good with it. I feel good. Don't with touch it. that part. Oh, you don't touch that? No. You, you burn your fingers like. Sus. Yeah. Whoa. Oh. 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 It just went off in your hands. Oh. <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> so sorry. It's not time. Sorry. Somebody, somebody said that before. Are you sure? Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I have that one in my car. Say, it's not his to give away. <laughs> <laughs> and in interviews, I've heard you talking, Samuel, about because actors always complain about having to do green screen. We don't complain. We just say, you know, it was a very difficult process. <laughs> we don't complain. Actors don't complain. I love green screen, don't you? Because, Sandra, you've just finished, uh, is it Gravity? Yes. The George Clooney, you and yes. George Clooney mm -hmm. in space. Was that all green screen? Uh, to do, yes, they had a green screen, they had an LED light box. They had the most insane contraptions that had never been used. I'm hung up on 12 wires on some black oh. stick. Oh, it was amazing. Hung up on 12 wires with George. So is he as hot as he thinks <laughs> he is? <laughs> yes. Yes, he is. He's the hottest man I've ever met. Next hey. to these two men right here. Oh. Thank you, man. What about like, chocolate liver? <laughs> we're, we're in the room. Really? We're really? You couldn't go three. You couldn't throw me a bone, no. These two men. You're too far away. <sighs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I give you a lightsaber, and that's how you behave. <laughs> hey, uh, listen, uh, we must talk uh, about Samuel, because you were in Britain. 
uh, oh. promoting a couple of charities you're very involved in. Uh, yes. One is uh, one for the boys, and that's a male cancer charity. Male cancer awareness, yes. We're trying to create awareness in men and let men know that it's okay for them to talk about, you know, cancer too. Men don't deal with cancer the same way women do. Men don't talk about their health issues. We don't go to the doctor either. Oh, no. And which prostate is a cancer. terrible error. Forget about that. Yeah, you know, it's like, <laughs> all you got to do is say, well, all you got to do is go to the doctor and get probed. A little bit of <laughs> No, but we're just, just trying to get men to engage in actively doing something about their health. So we're doing this uh, whole big thing in uh, October. And I'm doing, um, this weekend, I'm here doing um, some stuff for uh, Alzheimer's, the Alzheimer's organization. Um, my mom passed last year from Alzheimer's. And I, my grandfather had it. Her brother had it. Her sisters got it. My grandmother on my father's side got it. So I feel like I'm surrounded by you know, yeah. Alzheimer's. So every time I forget why I walk in the room, I go, oh, no, God, oh, God, oh, God. <laughs> So I'm always tripping about it, so I'm trying to do something about it because I may need that aid yeah. at some point. So the big fundraiser in October, yes. uh, the big gala dinner, that's for... One for the boys. And I think we've got a short clip of a film uh, promoting that charity. Oh, yeah. Here it is. One, two, Men don't talk about cancer. It's not the manly thing to do. Well, I'm here to tell you, it is the manly thing to do. Don't be dumb. Talk about it. Very good. Now, before this week's visit to Famous Red Chair, it's time for some music. Now, this man was the youngest Brit to premiere at the top of the chart with his debut album, which produced a string of hits. Here, performing an exclusive version of the album track, Broken, please welcome Mr. Jake Bug! <laughs> Peace and love. 
To appear, you seemed like a man when you were doing the song. You've come over here and suddenly you're a child. Adorable. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you do to the song? Uh, and uh, <laughs> I want to pick him up and burp him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sorry. Because you, you know, you're older than you look, aren't you? Uh, I'm 19. You're not. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and uh, th that's on the current album, which is out now. But you're, uh, you are working on a new one. Uh, yeah, I am. Yeah, I'm uh, recording it with uh, Rick Rubin up in, uh, in Malibu, and uh, in Malibu. In Malibu, yes. Yeah, make bit... friends, make friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit mad for me because uh, you know it's uh, many miles away from where I'm from. So, uh, but it's going well. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> it's really understated. Yeah. Yeah. We're working with Rick Rubin. Malibu. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Right. First album did quite well. Second album did really yeah, well. Yeah. And uh, presumably you've got to do some live dates during the summer, yeah? Yeah, I've got, uh, got festivals coming up Glastonbury, uh, Tina Park, and uh, Reading and Leeds as well. They're loving it. Who knew that crowd was going? But apparently they are. They're very excited. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, before we go tonight, just time for a uh, final visit of the series to the Red Chair. So, uh, who, who is there? Hello. Hello. Hi. What's your name? Uh, Phoebe. Phoebe? Yes. Lovely Phoebe. And uh, where are you from? Um, Harrow. Harrow, you say? She's from Harrow. Everyone's very excited. <laughs> and uh, what are you in Harrow, Phoebe? Um, well, I actually live in Brighton at the moment because I'm a student. Oh, you're messing with my head, Phoebe. <laughs> and, uh, and what are you studying? Uh, media. Oh, yeah. Mm, be the judge of that. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, off you go with the story, Phoebe. Uh, well, basically, a few months ago, it was my birthday, and my friends, uh, Sadie and Grace, hello? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> they die. Do they ask her for shout outs? Mm -mm. No. <laughs> Do they die? Oh. Hmm? Do they die? Yes, that's, this is the end of their life. <laughs> it's, a, it's a high stakes game here <laughs> on the BBC One. Yeah. It was going well, no, then I died. <laughs> uh, okay, someone will have replaced her now. It's like that, just in, out. Hello. Hi. Hey. Hi. What's your name, sir? Shaquille. Shaquille? Yep. And uh, where are you from, Shaquille? London. Uh, lovely. And what do you do? I'm um, a drama student. A drama student? Oh, mm -mm. This will be. Awesome. Did, did Samuel L. Jackson just go, mm mm? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey. Off you go. All right, basically, um, I'm on my, I was on my way to work and I work in a supermarket and I saw this little old lady who I've seen before. Yes. So she was crossing the road. I thought, oh, let me help her. She's like, oh, thank you, young man. Thank you for helping me. <laughs> Did I ask him to audition? No. <laughs> I asked him to tell a story. Like mine. Yeah, like mine. you were there, Thank weren't you? you kind of like much. sharp with the voices. Mm. Yeah, well, yeah, I liked it when he portrayed the old lady. <laughs> it really got me. I thought, he's like an old lady. <laughs> <laughs> Take what do you stand at this? Am I mean, making good calls, bad calls, Jake? I think you're making very good calls, yeah. Thank you very much, Jake. <laughs> I've got you, vote. <laughs> OK. OK, OK, this is the last one, the last one. This better be good. OK, here we go. 
Hello. Hi. Hi, what's your name? Helen. Helen. And where are you from, Helen? Bournemouth. All right. And uh, what do you do there? I'm a dental nurse. All right, very good. Oh, do you clean the teeth? No, I just do the sucker. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do the skills job. Do the sucker. Yeah, I like that. It explains a lot about British teeth, doesn't oh, it? Yeah. Do you do the cleaning? No. <laughs> Clean them. Do the sucker. Do the sucker. What, what mysterious task you discovered? <laughs> Just suck out the saliva. <laughs> a dry tooth is a good tooth. <laughs> Uh, off we go with your story. Okay, I own um, exotic pets and my Hold snake it. got loose and it had been missing for about three months and we live in a block of three flats. Yes. And we thought we'd better tell our neighbours after about two months. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, like I told my, my neighbours and about a week after I told my neighbour above me, she actually come running down um, the stairs and said, Helen, your snake is in my pushchair. She just took her daughter out of it, so... I'm not sure how it got up to the, to the flat above us. It's, it's a snake. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not a vet, like but I think they do. Snakes? Yeah. yeah. It was a, it's a corn snake, a four-foot corn oh, snake. Oh, it's that's all right then. Yeah, that's all right. Yes. <laughs> um, although you finished your story, yeah. I'm still going to flip you. Uh, there you go. And it's a sequel. Snakes in a pram. Snakes in a pram. a pram. You can be in that. Four-foot corn snake. Uh, well done. If you'd like to join us on the show and have a go in the red chair, you can. You can visit us via our website at this very address. And thank you all so much to all my guests tonight. Mr. Jake Bug! <laughs> Nick Ross! <laughs> Samuel Jackson! <laughs> and Sandra Fuller! Hey! That is it for this series. We'll be back later in the year. Till then. Have a great summer, everyone. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You've got the best seat in the house over on BBC Two now for tonight's headliners, Arctic Monkeys Live at Glastonbury now. Whilst over on BBC Three, it's Family Guy. And here on BBC One, it's Carnage, waging war on invading alien insects. Sci-fi satire, Starship Troopers, next.